If you're old, like me, you may remember a day in gaming where instead of downloading a game off of Steam or off of the EA Play Store, you had to actually go to a store in a physical location and purchase a game. You got that game on a CD that you would use to install on your computer. I know, we're talking ancient times. When you were installing that game, you were actually prompted to put a CD key into that installer. Now, also around that time, if you were in kind of the hacker cyberspaces, you remember that there were things called key generators. There were programs that would generate a key for you automatically that would let you play the game without having to pay for it. The way those worked were people had actually gone into the game and reverse engineered how the key algorithm worked that validated that the key was correct. They would create a program that would generate an infinite number of keys and put them onto the internet for people to download for free. Most of the time, those key generators were malware and would get you hacked and I may or may not have done that one or a thousand times on my parents' computer, but that's beside the point. Now, while it would be illegal for me to take a game and make a key generator on this video for you today, luckily there are sample problems that emulate that same scenario. We can reverse engineer that and then write a script to output our infinite number of keys. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. So the site that I mentioned before is CrackMe's One. It's a website that has a near infinite number of reverse engineering challenges that you can use to kind of hone your reverse engineering skills, kind of a fun little puzzle website. And with it downloaded, we'll do kind of our initial triage here. So what I'd like to do with any program is just run strings on it to get an idea of what we're looking at uh, at like a really high level to tell me kind of how big the problem is and then also what functions I can expect. Um, so we have a couple strings here. So key gen me name and key. This is likely going to be the usage if we give it the wrong inputs. And then I'm assuming our two states, so the good job, meaning we got it correct. And then the wrong key, we got it wrong. Okay, pretty easy. Um, we have puts for the printing stir to probably check the length of some inputs. That actually tells us that, that a correct key may have a certain length that is required to meet. So we can check that out later. And then A2I, that's ASCII to integer. So it's gonna take input that we give the program uh, and convert that to an integer from ASCII. So that's good to know. Okay, that's kind of a high level overview of what's going on here. So let's dive right into the meat and potatoes. Here I have the program opened up in Ghidra. If you don't know what Ghidra is, it's a reverse engineering platform. Uh, they recently actually in Ghidra 10 uh, released the dark mode for Ghidra. I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of the color scheme, but it is much better than the white color scheme that used to be uh, available by default. So let's dive into it right now. Um, in Ghidra here, we have the breakdown of the elf, and we then we have the entry point for that elf. The entry point leads us to you know where the start label is, and then the start label for libc will have the libc start main function, which will always have the main function as the first argument. So we can click on that, and we're gonna type L on the function name and just rename this main. I wanna keep track of where the main function is. So main, as we all know in C, takes two arguments, arg C and arg V, and it is already cast as a care pointer pointer, that's correct. And then, so basically it's gonna look for if arg C equals three, meaning we give it three arguments, the command line name and then two additional arguments, we do something, otherwise it gives us a usage. So let's kind of go back and confirm that that's happening in real life. I do key gen me. Okay, so if I don't give it the right number of arguments, it tells me, hey, I need your name and I need your key. And then, so now we know also the name is argv1 and the key is argv2. So then we've, if the thing is correct, we say that something equals argv1. So like we just found out, that's our name. So let's call that name. And then this is going to be interesting. So it's actually doing something kind of weird here. It's taking the sterlen of argv0, which is going to be the name of the program. So this is going to be program name. Very odd, that's actually part of the key gen problem. Typically the name of the program is not even thought of. And then, so finally we have A2I, which is the ASCII to integer of argv2, which is the key. So this is going to be the key, we can say key as int. All right, awesome. So then we have uv, uh, uvar1, which is the return of this function that they're calling on the name. So let's go into this function to see what's happening. So this is gonna be probably um, magic key gen function. Let's just make an assumption there. And again, this is being cast onto the name argument. We have two counters here. We say while true, some variable is equal to the sterling of the name. If the length is less than some number, break. Otherwise, this is equal to this plus name of, oh, okay. So what's going on here is it's, it's adding all the ASCII values in the name buffer. It says while our counter is greater than the length of our name, take the value that started at zero. So we'll call this the, uh, let's call this the checksum because it kind of is like a checksum operation. And then we have, we'll say I, right? So we'll say checksum is equal to the checksum currently plus the ASCII value at that position. 
and then we'll increase by one. Awesome. So essentially all this does, we can call this uh, check some name. We'll just say sum name actually to keep it simple. It's going to be the sum of the name. Awesome. So we have that. We can go back to the, the main function that called us. And so let's look at what the algorithm is doing here now. So we're going to call this variable also sum because that's what's happening here. So we sum the name and we have the name. We see the program name, program name length. And then we say the key as int. So then we say if the sum of our name XOR with, oh no, I'm sorry, this is not the name. This is the first character of the name. This is first pair name. Okay, and this is where the critical piece happens, right? If we pass this comparison, if we give it this input as the key, then we get the good job, which means that we passed our, our test and the key allowed us to install the game. So we're going to talk about the operation that happens here. So first, it does the sum of our name XOR with the first character in the name. And let me make sure that that's happening first. Again, I don't know the order of operations uh, when it comes to XOR. I'm not sure if it's, if, if it's PEMDEX or PEXEM DES or something. What is the order of operations here? I'm pretty sure we, it's, again, it's whatever C would do. So we can actually probably just assume that it's going to be read left to right. So the sum of our name as an integer XOR with the first character in the name times three. We, okay, because it's called sum, right? Because we add that three times. Then, we left shift that by the length of our program name ended with OX1F. So let's go through all of that and make sure we know, like, let's test our hypothesis. So what is it again? Let's test our hypothesis. So I guess we're going to write down the algorithm to figure out what's going on with the key gen just so I can do some quick mapping, right? So again, it is the sum of our name XOR with the first character in our name that times three left shifted by the length of the program name and hex one F. All right, so let's hold that right there so I can read that for the future. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Python and do our quick little operations. So we're gonna start with our name being just the letter A, a single character so that it's very simple to do. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to have the character A, which has the ordinal value of 65. So let's see what this evaluates to to figure out what the order of operations is in Python for versus XOR versus multiplication. Okay, cool, so it's not zero because 65 XOR 65 should have been zero, then this time zero is zero. So that means that multiplication takes precedence over XOR, so it's PEMDASX at the end, do it last. Cool, so then we take 130, left shifted by the name of the program name, which is going to be keygen me, and then we end that with hex 1F. Oh, order of operations. I have to wrap this in parentheses, most likely. There we go. So that's this is going to be our key value if we use the name A. Let's give her a shot. Keygen me, I have the name A, and then I have the key. Boom, baby. But wait, we're not done. We may have solved a single instance of the keygen me, but what if I want to have a different name? We're going to create a script that will arbitrarily produce a different key for every name that we provide it. So let's get into that right now. Keygen.py. So we're in our code here. We'll set up the standard Python stuff, user ben m python3. We'll import sys, import sys to get the argv, and we'll create our function gen. It takes an argument name, and we'll say if the program runs as main, uh, we will print gen sys.argv of one. So there you go. This is going to run our program on the first argument we get. So what we're going to do is return the key value for a given name. So we have to again do our operation. So we do sum x or first care times three. Let's wrap this in parentheses to make sure we understand the order of operations. And I want to emphasize this as well because I would imagine some interpreters may treat it differently than others. So we have sum x or first care times three left shifted by the program name. Interesting, so this is gonna be name and program name. So we'll call it program and we'll also take uh, sys.argv2. And we'll add a usage to this as well. Uh, left shifted by program len, program, let's call it program uh, len hex that or and that. Wonderful, so we'll start with this. We'll say that the key equals zero, say for character in name key plus equals C. And we'll do ORD of C because actually argv will come in as a string. So that's actually gonna be the right way to do this. We'll say ORD. 
and then we'll say and then we'll say that key XOR equals name of zero, ord of name of zero. So we have to get the ordinal value times three. And we'll say that key equals key left shifted by len of program and hex one f. So go with that, and we'll return key. And that'll be it. And I'm sure we're gonna have some kind of syntax error here just because, you know, byte strings and strings are annoying as hell in, in Python. Um, we also wanna add some usage here. So we could say, if len of sys.argv not equal three, we'll say print AO give name and program name, something like that. All right, cool. Let's see if we can't play with this. So Python three, key gen by, I'm bad at Python. Coding is hard. Cool, there we go. I think it'll just continue to execute. See, even, even senior devs make mistakes, you make them, cool. So we'll say that our name is A and the program name is keygenme. Okay, cool, and it gave us a proper key. Wow, that actually worked first try. I'm very shocked by that. Uh, let's see if we say that our name is Steve Jobs and the name is keygenme. Okay, let's see what Steve Jobs' key is. Nope. All right, survey says. Good job. Well guys, I hope you learned something new. I hope you learned the art of key cracking like we did back in the early 2000s. If you like this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, and then go watch this video about how NASA writes dope code. Or this one.